it's become the all natural seal. I mean, if you remember that from from back yeah. in the nineties, the two early two thousands, if it said all natural, we thought it meant it was good for you right. because it was all natural. I mean, what else does that mean? As we've talked about biblical worldview and what that looks like, uh, you know, and whether it's in a university or in our homeschool or whatever, I think that sometimes there are ways that we get it wrong, right? Talk about that. How do we get biblical worldview wrong? And then how do we rightly shape the minds of our children? Mm. Well, I'll tell you this. Um, Like any homeschool parent, we're super picky about what we use, um, Mm -hmm. what kind of curriculum and and textbooks and things like that. Um, and I think that's one of the strengths of, of homeschooling. Um, you get to be the picky one. You don't, you're, you're not at the mercy of someone else um, and deciding these things. Because what I've seen out there is how terribly wrong it could go. Um, there's textbooks out there that claim to have a biblical worldview. They, they, you know, it's become the all natural seal. I mean, if you remember that from, from back yeah. in the 90s, the two, early 2000s, if it said all natural, we thought it meant it was good for you right. <laughs> because it was all natural. I mean, what else does that mean? Uh, in 2015, they found that that actually the FDA never approved that statement um, put on things. So it didn't mean anything. You could have put all natural on a Kit Kat bar and it would have been, right. <laughs> it's fine, it's legal. Um and I think that's what biblical worldview has turned into. People slap it on their textbooks. They slap it on their curriculum. And I think a lot of people really believe they actually have it. But what they've really done is they've taken a Bible verse that seems to kind of correlate. Mm. And then they um, kind of shove it in there. And there's lots of ways that people get it wrong. Um, so they might find one thing. Let's say you have a science textbook and they say, well, God has designed everything. And that's true. and That's great. But what if design is the only thing they ever, ever talk about throughout the entire book? Um, what you're doing is you're setting your kids up for the debate over whether design um, can naturally come about. They need more than that. They, want, they need to see that there are levels of biblical worldview that they begin to go through. Um, and so I've seen, I've seen textbooks take the same, the same basic idea and run it all the way through the book. There's no diversity. There's no, uh, talking about different types of, 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 uh, themes of worldview going through there. Um, and there's no levels of learning. And so, um, and I know I'm, I'm prejudiced towards BGU press, but it's, it's only because they're doing it right. Sure. Um, and so what they do is they say, well, how do we get kids really actually engaging and then being able to assess their biblical worldview? And so, so it starts out with identifying um, themes of, of biblical worldview throughout the textbook. Then it goes to analyzing those things and then evaluating bad worldviews and then being able to formulate um, a worldview and then apply worldview um, out in the real world where you're getting um, application going. And so those now, those are Bloom's taxonomy words, you know, that people in education uh, are all excited about. But what it does is it helps them build and scaffold their way through biblical worldview thinking mm-hmm. so that they are learning a pattern of thinking as they see the world. And every subject flow, you know, makes them flow through that pattern so that when they go out in the world, it becomes a habit. And being able to make your brain habitually interpret the world through God's word is exactly what we want our kids mm-hmm. to do. Um, otherwise, you know, if you don't have that kind of pattern, that template for them that they constantly use and constantly, you know, get used to it, and understand it, they're going to they're going to fall for anything, any yeah. bad argument, any bad worldview because they don't have that template. And BGU Press uh, does that in a way that I think is is really the right the right way to do it. Be, and whatever you use, especially if you're a homeschooler, yeah. whatever it is you do use, go through there. Make sure they're assessing the biblical worldview, not just mm-hmm. having it, not just have a Bible right. verse at the beginning, but they're showing that you can assess this process with your student. If they're doing that, then, you know, great, use it. 
Homeschool Insights is sponsored by CTC Math. If you're looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com and try it for free. For more great homeschool inspiration and resources, listen to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 